Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. I just ordered the parts at the motorcycle shop. It should take about two, two to three weeks or months to come through. Welcome to my my crib, my workstation. All right. Today we'll be concentrating on the on the cleanup of the head, resetting the valves, cleaning up the exhaust ports, things like that. But before I do that, some of you might know that I've used this aftermarket barrel, but there's too much vibration and rattling over there going on on there. So I've got the Omi piston rings on this Fong Kong piston here. It's only got 1500 on there, but I've noticed that my markings for the top position of the compression ring is missing. So I'm going to have to try and make light scrape marks on there so that I know that this ring gets the top. Right, so this is the Fong Kong piston ring. These are the Omi piston rings. So I've been installing my slightly used piston, all right, my Omi piston. And of course, my original bloody barrel, right? This thing is going to the bin. This aftermarket barrel is going to the bin. And this piston is going to the bin, all right? So let me just quickly remove these piston rings in order. So when I do reinstall them back onto the, my original piston, it'll be in good working order, all right? Put the video on pause quickly. All righty, all righty, all righty. I just removed these piston rings from the Hong Kong piston RV. These piston rings have only got 1500 kilometers on there. They're not cheap. Right, so basically I've got a top ring. And I've got a I've got a compression ring. The top one's a light one. I did, I did make some markings on there so that, I, so, so that I do well know exactly top and, you know, position over there. And again, I've got the compression ring. I've also made some markings on there. The black ring, right? The scraper ring, sorry. So you've got the compression ring and you've got the dark ring. That's the, the scraper ring, right? It also serves as a backup by compression ring. So I'll be taking these piston rings, throwing them inside the and there's other three other little rings, oil rings. Right, there's no direction for this. It doesn't matter which way they go in there. You're putting that inside there. And then I'll take some of this Q uh, or W40 spray inside the you must remember now this is high tensile steel it will corrode. So this will be standing there for a couple of weeks. Right, so let's just see the comp you know the difference between the aftermarket barrel and the original one. Here's the aftermarket one, right? I won't be using the, the bottom end gasket because I've kind of made a few things on the crankcase itself, so I'll have to be using some RT gasket in them. So let's just take this fucking piece of shit. This is Hong Kong. I can't even sell this, all right? I don't want the customer coming back to me in a couple of weeks' time. I'll go to the fucking police station and make a case against me for selling him inferior crap, right? So, I'm not using that, right? That thing, this rattles itself loose. As you can see, it's got four. It's got two there. They're tightening them down to the crankcase, and it's got two there tightened down to the head itself. These things, there's just so much vibration that that thing is rattling itself loose. It's rattling those things loose over there. And the more you tighten those bloody studs and those wing nuts, this is going to happen. It's going to break. There's just so much vibration. So that is going to the bin. So let's just take this. As you can see, I've also got the Hong Kong piston rings from this and these Hong Kong valve seals. So I won't be using this. Maybe this. Hopefully I can try to sell this and get a few bucks for this. But this, I won't even take a chance. So I'm going to take this. Put this in the bloody bin. Okay, take that. Throw that inside there. There we go. And put that to the right side. I still got another... I would say a good 7,000 kilometers on this. I mean, the compression on this Omi piston and the barrel still standing at 123 or 125 PSI. So that's good to go for another seven. Maybe if I'm lucky, I could probably get another 10,000 kilometers on that. All right, enough about that. Let's, let's, let's concentrate here on the head. All right. I'm going to be resetting the valves again. One. My tool over here. Let's just put this one side. I'm gonna put that to the right side. The pin. I got my tools over here. Cross setting tools. Okay, first thing first, we need to put some W40 or Q8 down here. And we can use a pair of pliers. And hopefully, we can remove these locating dials. If you don't know what the locating dials is, it basically lines itself up with the head, with the barrel. Sorry, with the barrel. You'll see that the barrel. It's got two locating dials, you understand? So there's two two of them crisscross that line up 
And again, there's two locating dells that line up with the crankcase itself. Oh, it's very important that you have those locating dells lining up. Oh, how do I say? In this position, in, in this position over there. Right. So let's, let's use some of the spray over there. Some of this hose pliers here. And remove these locating dells. And then we can remove this broken stud. I'm going to have to use a pair of pliers for that. Some of my spray. And as you can see, it's broken over there. Right, so I'm we'll be replacing all four of those studs and these wing nuts. All right, let's put the video on pause quickly. Alrighty, alrighty, I just removed these locating delts. All right, these locating delts, as I said before, they seat in on the barrel itself. Now it's time to remove the stud here. Let's just use some of the sprayer, broken stud. Hopefully, I don't need a bloody stud remover. I need to order myself a stud remover to remove that stud on the crankcase itself. I've tried using my belly fucking impact driver. All right, I've tried using a welding machine to take on a nut on there like this, but as you can see, I've destroyed my belly, my tapping bit tool. All right, and of course, I've also destroyed my belly vice grips. But hopefully, I don't need a belly stud remover for this. I can just use my fucked up belly vice grip. G20 and turn out that as I said before I'll be replacing all four of those studs and those wing nuts. Right. It's let's get stuck into this. Okay. Right, you can see that I've got my vice grip as tightly as possible against this stud here. And hopefully she turns out. And then we can concentrate on cleaning up this bloody this uh, how do I say head, cleaning up these valve seats and then some inspection on there. Alright. Well, Seems I don't need a stud, a stud, stud remover for that. Look how easy that's coming out. Wow. Easy peasy. Yep, there you go. As you can see, my trusty old vice grip actually worked on there. Without welding a tagging on a nut on there, like I did there with the previous one over there. That came out pretty easy. Let's concentrate more on uh, cleaning up this, this section over here. I'll show you what to do. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Let's clean up this head here. All right, what you got here? Got a little blade. You got yourself a little brass wire brush. All right, you want to clean up here before you remove the valves. The thing is here with the blade, you do not really want to scrape too close to that seat there. All right, that is engineered like it for a reason. So you want to avoid scraping that little bevel on. You'll see that there's a bevel on this side on the exhaust valve and the intake valve. So let's just take a blade here and lightly, lightly scrape the shit off here. And that brass wire brush can only do so much. All right. Put the video on pause and I'll show you as I go along. As you can see there, this is a very, very slow process using a blade. But you can see there, I really am avoiding that bevel around the valves itself. All right. Right. Got my little brush here. Put the video on pause and show you as I go along. Huh? Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. As you can see, I've cleaned up this. Before I removed the valves, I did a bit of a cleanup over here. I just used my blade and a wire brush. The last thing you want to do with your blade, you will see that each valve, the exhaust valve and the intake valve, has got a little bit of a, a, a bevel on there. A bevel seat has been cut by engineering shop. You know, I mean, the last thing you want to do is take a blade and mess around with that. All right. The last thing you want to do. All right, trust me. Right. Let's remove the, the valves, uh, valve springs and the collets. You know, you could use this compressor tool over here, as I got over here, but this I only use for, sorry about that. I only use this thing to basically, to reinstall the valves, okay? Because the springs tension is very tight. Okay, let's remove these things here. If you are going to be using this, you've got to be careful that these collets, once these collets jump out, you might lose them, you might not find them again. Let's just check here how these collets are installed. You will see that these collets, I don't know if you can see, uh, you can see the gaps are, are even, all right? There's no big, small gap, tight gap, and big gap on there. You can see that the gaps there are even. Check this side. Okay, you will see that the gaps there. Or even, all right? They're there. they're there for a reason. If those gaps are not even, what you can have is you could have your collet, these collets, 
jumping out. All right. Uh, let's also inspect where our cam sits. Our cam sits over here. I don't see any major scoring or whatever. All right. That looks good to go. All right. Got myself a socket here. Uh, I think this is a spark plug socket. Anyhow, I've got a magnet on inside of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on here and give it a light tap with a hammer. Got a little. Uh, let's see if I'm okay. Uh, no, I don't think that one's going to work. Let's try this one. I know this video seems long, long and boring. Well, if you don't like it, don't watch. All right, this is this for the guys who are in a Gen 125. Maybe they're doing a top and rebuild or whatever. All right, so I'll take that little hammer, then lightly tap it on there. All right, then I've got. You don't want to mix this stuff up. I've got an intake valve. And I've got an exhaust off. The stuff should go back in the same place where they come out. Alright, so this is obviously your carburetor on here. So this is obviously your intake valve and that's your exhaust valve. Alright, so I won't be mixing up those springs and those parts. Alright, so we'll be going into separate tubs here. Right, let me pound away lightly on this and I'll show you how easy it is to remove this stuff. Right, I gave it like three taps over there. So you can see the collets on the inside over there. Magnet, it's obviously caught it. The last thing you want is these collars jumping around and losing them. All right, let's do the next one. All right, I've removed the intake valves, exhaust valves. As you can see, the springs are off, collars are off, washes off. Let's just flip it over and see what happens. There we go. We can push that out of the finger. All right, and of course, here's the small valve. That's the intake, uh, exhaust valve. This one over here is the bigger one intake valve right we're gonna have to do some valve relapping or valve seating again on this right. we don't want any anything to go badly wrong here right okay so that's done i saw uh, i did read some online if you can use some i don't know say so steel polish and just clean up this little bit over here let's let's go get the steel polish and see if we clean it up because I don't know, read online it, it helps. How do I say the carbon build up over here when it sticks easily on the surface on here? Let's just use some of that quickly. Right, we've got some of the metal polish on here. Let's, let's, put some of, let's put some of this on there and try to give it a nice polished surface so the carbon build up hopefully won't stick on you. But I don't know. Just gonna read online on there. Okay, I'm gonna take this with my finger. Clean it up, put it on there, take me wire brush, and hopefully I can get a nice polished surface with this. All right. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. You can see it's a big, big, big of a mess there. Take a rag and wipe it off. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Here we are. Okay, as you can see, it's cleaned up pretty nicely. I use some of that auto seal polish on the inside over there. Hopefully, the carbon buildup doesn't stick on there as I read on the internet. Right, I still have to reset the valves, but while I, before I'll do that, I want to clean up this paintwork. So what I'm using this is the W40 over here. It's a nice soft brushes, like close to toothbrushes, to clean up the paint and in between over there. Right, as you can see, this top surface looks nice. But I'm also using some earbud cleaners there. Let me just charge some of my, some of my onion rings here. Mm -hmm. This looks well there. Mm, mm. Let's do it. Ah. Just clean up inside there. The butt cleaners, some W40. Those soft brushes there. Clean up these fins nicely. And I've cleaned out the exhaust port. Auto saw, right. And then we'll do the, once I finish cleaning up this thing, this component, this head. Then we'll do the valve lapping tool thing and I'll show you how that works. Right. If you guys stick around for another entertaining, very boring, entertaining video of mine. And maybe you poor as motherfuckers, South Africans, will subscribe. I know times it's hard in New South Africa. But if you want to keep informed with the latest updates, subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Okay, thank you. Till next time.